At some point in our lives, just about all of us have had one big thing in common. Yes, we all are or have been employees. You know, toiling away for the man or woman, but always working hard for the money. Da 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 da. The fact is that in labor history, it was big business that had to get busy and set the pace to organize an efficient workplace. Da da. In the early years of the industrial age, beyond the rather mundane tasks of organizing workers into shifts and establishing time card systems, there was the task of creating a fast, efficient, yet safe relationship between man and machine. It is a choreography between machinery and humankind, but <laughs> the, the, the drum is being beat, beaten by the machines. <laughs> yes. I met Mark Gruther, chief curator of the Henry Ford, to discuss the topic of managing mass production. When mass production came into being, what kind of human interactions, human systems needed to be figured out? It's about this balance between production capacity and ambition and the need for human interaction with the machinery to do it. So we're talking machinery, we're talking often hard work, we're talking repetition. So these were all factors that had to be explored. If you've got a system that can run at a high capacity, it rather drives the people who are interacting with it, and that, that becomes a difficult dance. Oh, my goodness, right, because humans have to keep up with the machines to some extent. Yes, absolutely, and, and there was a great deal of investigation done right at the end of the 19th century about what well, was basically scientific management. What is the best way to do something? People like Frederick Winslow Taylor and Henry Ford developed systems that are too nuanced to describe fully here, Taylorism and Fordism. But both analyzed how humans could perform best and how machines could operate best when the two collide in mutual endeavors that together mean business, big business. One of the people in the 19th century, early 20th century, Frederick Winslow Taylor, who instituted what is now referred to as Taylorism, very much got into this notion of analyzing how people did work and trying to improve how any action was actually done in a manufacturing facility. Fordism, which came about because of the work with the moving assembly line, is a kind of dynamic version of that. So Taylor was looking at it from a much more defined way. The Ford engineers were looking at it more from a material flow and a production output way, but it all comes down to measurability and scrutiny a constant improvement. Taylorism and Fordism, are each advocating something? They are, in essence, advocating that notion that there's a, there's a perfectibility about processes. Because humans are working in it, there's a kind of perfectibility with the kind of human interaction that goes on. And while we all know perfectionism can often slow human productivity, to strive toward that unreachable end in the world of managing mass production may be the very detail that makes all the difference.